Welcome back to The Agent Goldmine. Here's what to expect to learn in today's show. Why less is sometimes more when it comes to agents on a team. Why not to get out of production. How to manage being a content creator, team leader, conference planner, and mom. And when it's time to switch up your business coach. Today we have on Katie Day out in the Houston, Texas area. You've probably heard of her. You maybe already follow her on either Instagram or YouTube. She has 36,000 followers on Instagram, 5,000 subscribers on YouTube. Last year in 2023, her and her team of eight did 200 transactions about the same amount the year before that. She is move me to TX on all social media platforms. Give her a follow. She's also going to talk about the conference that she's hosting this year as well. Enjoy. This is the agent goldmine where you'll find real talk, shit talk, and ambition. We're here to build real businesses and be more than your average agent. We want to know what the killers are actually doing within their businesses, the reality of it, all tactical, no fluff. So we're here to find out. Please share and enjoy. Katie Day, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. We are stoked to have you. Like I mentioned before we started recording, I'm a fangirl, big time and watching you from afar. It's awesome to be talking to you. (laughs) Uh, I'm excited to be here. Thanks so much for having me. Of course. Okay. So I want to start it off with your social media and your brand because you have, is it like almost 50,000 or maybe like um, $30,000? Uh, followers on Instagram, like 5,000 on YouTube. How? Where did you start out with social media, developing your social media presence? And which platform are you focused most on today? Yeah. So when I got into real estate, I got in in like 2016 and I went full-time in 2017. And so everyone at the time and still it was talking about like social media and video, right? And so I knew that I needed to do it, but I didn't really have a full understanding of what that looked like. So, you know, if you scroll back to like 2016, 2017, all it is is like just listed, just sold posts and like nothing else. Uh, because that's, that's what I thought, you know, you should do because that's what everyone was doing. And so that's definitely evolved over time. Um, you know, on Facebook, Instagram, and, and as you said, YouTube as well. And so, you know, I think that my goal was always to just provide as much value as I as I could. Um, you know, similar to like a Tom Ferry that you know you can go to his YouTube channel and get everything for free, but people still pay him thousands of dollars a year for coaching. Um, you know, that was something that I was like, okay, you know, if I gave away information about Houston and different things that are happening here and how to buy a home and different stuff like that, like then maybe people will follow me and then also have me, you know, help them buy or sell real estate. So that was kind of the idea behind it and has just evolved over the past few years. Is there anything that you don't give away for free online? Um, no, I mean, I'm a, I'm a pretty open book, whether that's, you know, talking to agents or, you know, to a buyer or a seller. Um, you know, I think that realistically, if someone was going to, as far as a consumer goes, if someone was going to interview you and then take all that information and go, you know, work with someone else, they were probably going to do that anyways, right? Like, you know, hopefully then they can, they can still have a better experience, even if it's not with me. So yeah, I mean, I don't think that there's anything that's like, you know, super proprietary secret information that, you know, you couldn't find whether you're looking to do something real estate related or, you know, whatever. Between all of the platforms that you're on, what generates the most or maybe top two platforms that generate the most business for you? So for us, it's definitely YouTube and Instagram that generate the most business. Um, YouTube, what I love about it is like longer form content, you know, is going to hit hopefully now and then two years from now, three years from now and, and has a lot more staying power. Right. And then as far as Instagram goes, you know, we do get like direct consumer DMs that are like, hey, I want to buy a house. I want to sell a house type stuff. But a lot of it's also like for agent agent referrals and, you know, leveraging relationships with agents to, you know, uh, help their clients that are looking to buy or sell here in Texas. And with with those clients that that are messaging you on Instagram or really in any way, are you finding you're having a lot more inbound referrals or outbound referrals like out of your your commission checks, you know, like out of all your commissions, what's like the percentage of like the breakdown, like inbound referrals, outbound, rev share? What does that look like? Yeah. Um, so we don't do a great job of tracking outbound referrals. We should do a better job of continuing to follow up on them, but we do get checks here or there, but I don't think that it's not, I don't think it's not significant enough to be like a pillar of our business, right? Um, you know, we send out a lot of referrals and oftentimes it'll be like, hey, Ali, like, 
take care of these people and instead of the 25%, like kick them back, you know, that as as assistance to their closing costs because it's a really good friend of mine type type situation. Um, so we do place a lot of referrals with other agents, but we don't necessarily always take referral fees. Agent agent referrals as far as like inbound to us, you know, people that are looking to buy or sell in Texas is about 30% of our business right now from, you know, different referrals from agents. Okay, gotcha. So with your Instagram and your YouTube target audience, because I know you're at real. So I assume there's also like the element of there's probably some agent attraction in there, maybe, but like, is the target audience of your Instagram and your YouTube, both the Houston buy sell type of thing? Yeah, for sure. So so the YouTube is like, that's the target audience, right? Consumers and, uh, you know, people that are looking to buy or sell in Houston, right? And so all of the, the content on, you know, our, our Houston channel is Houston based content, right? To, to not confuse the algorithm of like, hey, here's 43 different types of content. You know, I like sneakers, I like food, I like this, I like that. Like, we're very specific on like just Houston based content. As far as Instagram, there's a little bit more of a mix. Um, you know, I have a, a conference that I host each year. So, like, there's some stuff for that as far as like branding and marketing and video. But I would say like 95% of what's on Instagram is going to be consumer facing content. You know, most people that would reach out on Instagram, if it's agents, you know, potentially looking to join the brokerage or, you know, partner or whatever, like a lot of times it's it, like they're reaching out because of the consumer facing content, not necessarily like, you know, agent facing things. You know, I know a lot of people have like multiple pages or channels or things like that. But for me, it's like I can barely handle, you know, posting regularly on what I've got. So yeah, uh, sticking sticking to what I have is is what's working now until, you know, potentially having some additional leverage or something like that. Totally. And I am curious. I want to ask about your leverage in just a second. But so I'm on your YouTube channel, which it is, you know, move to Texas. There's, you know, your Houston realtor right there at the top. And I'm curious about you're behind the scenes with YouTube because, you know, you have this 36,000 followers on Instagram. You have, what is this? Almost 5,000 subscribers. And you guys sold 176 transactions. You're leading a team. There's so much going on. So maybe we'll just go right into that. Because like, my question is, I, and I'm working on trying to do a lot of research onto thumbnails and titles and hooks and all of these things. And it is incredibly time consuming. It it is so much like thought and effort and everyone's like, yeah, just throw it into chat GPT. And I'm like, Ugh. you know, so the, so what is the leverage that you have behind the scenes in managing your brand, your content and your team? So my, you're not going to like my answer um, as, <laughs> far okay. as, as, far as, as far as far as getting more leverage and, and things like that. And so <laughs> for me, what works best as far as creating content is batch shooting content, right? And so I have two different videographers that I work with, one for YouTube and longer form content. And we have a standing uh, like recurring calendar invite in the calendar for every Friday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m., right? And so every Friday that both of us are in town, we shoot for two hours and we shoot anywhere between like one to four different long form type videos, right? And so then that'll give me content. I have a little bit of a buffer of content from him, right, to, to be able to shoot that. And so that's the long form and that kind of like helps out for YouTube. I generally will be creating the idea for the content. I will create the title and the thumbnail and different things like that. Um, and I, I post the YouTube videos as well. Um, and then as far as for short form um, and as far as for like Instagram and things like that, like I post um, or I rewinding a little bit, I shoot that shoot content with a different videographer. We shoot probably every two to four weeks and we we will batch out, you know, anywhere between like 20 to 30 or 40 videos per shoot. And then that'll normally give me content for like a month or more. And so that's what helps me as far as like, okay, hey, you know, shooting for a couple of hours every single month you know, probably eight to 10 hours per month to give me content for the next, you know, 30 to 45 days. As far as posting on Instagram, I basically, I post everything on Instagram. Um, and I'm the only person with access to my account on Instagram. Um, you know, I, I hate when you like are DMing someone and like a bot keeps responding to you. I'm Dude, like, oh, sorry, worst. that's my bot. Uh, yeah. But I do we want to be talking about, you know, that. <laughs> So that that really frustrates me. So like I do use automations and things like that for like keywords of like DM me this to get this link, right? And things to kind of speed up the process. But like I don't ever want to give away like the actual conversation, right? Um, because if you're taking the time to message me, like then I want to ensure that I'm, you know, messaging you back and it's not just like a VA or a bot or whatever, right? But I do have a VA that takes my content that I post on Instagram and she'll then post it on like YouTube Shorts. She'll post it on LinkedIn, the Google business page. She'll put it on our Facebook business reels page. 
and different things like that because the copy's already written, right? Like the thumbnail's done, the post is done, and she like knows what to do. And it's in my voice because like I wrote it. And so, you know, I don't use chat GPT a ton um, for that type of thing. You know, I will use it for like ideas. Um, so one is like, I'll take, you know, say I have 15 topics for videos that I want to do. Then I'll like tell chat GPT, like, give me a list, a bulleted list, you know, in a outline format where the video idea is point number one, then it has four ideas for hooks, right? And like, I probably am not going to use those hooks, but at least gives me ideas of like, what would be like hook type things for, you know, Instagram or TikTok. And then I can kind of like put it into my own words and and have, you know, better or different hooks than just the same, like four things that I always say. Okay. So we have for long form, you have a videographer, you batch short form, you have a videographer, you batch, you post, but you also have a VA who re- he distributes essentially. And in my mind, I mean, content creation could just be a freaking full-time job in itself. But I'm also curious about like what leverage you have in place for this team of eight agents you have. Like you, you know, what what is in place for that as well? Yeah. Um, so I'm super fortunate. Like my husband and I work together. So, you know, I have a, a built-in additional team leader uh, for the team. Nice. Um, you know, outside of that, we do have two transaction coordinators. Um, and then we have two VAs that work with the team with, you know, helping with expired listings and seller reports for our seller clients. And, you know, if they need like a, a spreadsheet, you know, to be to be uh, organized or looked up or contact information to be found or stuff like that, like the VAs will help with that so that the agents can focus in on, you know, helping their clients and things like that. How specifically have you divided the roles between you and your husband? It varies. You know, um, I think that depending on the, I wouldn't say like week, but depending on like probably each year we kind of look at it, but then probably every like three to six months, we also look at it to see like what makes the most sense. You know, I normally am the one that goes to like real estate conferences and sometimes I travel to speak and do different things like that. And so if I'm on the road, then he's, you know, doing the team meetings and doing one-on-ones with agents and things like that. Uh, This year we moved it. So instead of doing them all in one week, they're spread out throughout the month. So when we have one-on-ones, if like I'm traveling for one week, then we can adjust it to where, you know, I'm able to be there for all of them because it's not like I'm traveling every single week. Um, and so we're, we've we've worked through, you know, a lot of kind of different iterations because we're both still in production as well. Um, so, you know, there's, there's a lot to be done. Uh, but I, I think that, you know, generally speaking, we, we figure it out. I, okay, do you plan on when, how long do you want to be in production for? Thank you for listening. Out of respect for your time, we want to make this show as valuable as possible for you. So if you have any feedback on how we can improve, please let us know. DM us at Allie the Agent and The Shelby Show. Uh, That's a great question. That's a really good question. No, it it varies. (laughs) I think that like, realistically, like, I don't think there's ever going to be a point that I'm going to be completely out of production. You know, just because I think that it is important to to understand kind of what's happening in the market, understand what's happening with buyers and sellers, you know, concerns that people are having and, and kind of what's what's happening. Um, I feel like a lot of people, you know, like get out of production and then they become like really out of touch with with what's happening in the world. Right. And so, um, you know, whether that's selling like a couple homes a year or just working with like my, you know, small group of past clients or, you know, working just with developers or just listing like our own projects and things like that. Like, I just want to make sure that I'm still like like, you know, not an out of touch, like, you know, agent, because you you know, when you come across them, and they're like, well, I've been in the business for 35 years. And you're like, okay, this is Who cares? crazy. So, no yeah. cares. <laughs> so what is that? And normally, we ask this later, but like, what does the future hold for you? If you want to stay in production indefinitely, is that like this real estate team indefinite? Do you plan on like growing it? Do you like it at eight people? What is the what does the future look like? Yeah, for sure. Um, So last year was an interesting year. Like obviously the market wasn't as busy, you know, as it was in like 2020 and 2021 and even 2022. So it really made us take like a hard look at like what we were doing with the team um, and what made the most sense. So like last year we got up to like 20, 25 agents on the team, um, but like not everyone was in production, you know? And so as we were working with people and we were trying to, you know, get them into production and things like that, we're like, if we took as much time, you know, and focused in on our agents that are already selling, you know, 20 plus homes a year, could they sell 40, you know, or could we get them more leverage so that they could sell 40, you know, and we have less agents and sell more homes. Um, and so we were really at a crossroads of like, we either need to like double down and 
uh, go up to, you know, 50 plus agents with a sales manager and all of these things or scale it back to where, you know, it's, it's more of a, a lean team. And so we decided the best the best route was to since we weren't sure what the market was going to hold this year, right, kind of lean out. And then, you know, if we need to scale later this year or next year at a later date, like we know what we need to do. It just wasn't necessarily in the cards, you know, last year. I feel like lean is always <laughs> the way to go, you know, for like one, the amount of profit and like two, just the mental clarity and like not <laughs> having like all of these extra add-ons that you have to just like challenge your day to day with, you know, like, and same thing with rental properties, you know, like having a hundred rental properties to me would just be such a nightmare. That like <laughs> you gives know, me like, anxiety as you say that. I'm like, oh, that like totally makes me nervous. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like just, I don't know. Just yesterday I was dealing with like insurance. I'm swapping over from Protegrity and Travelers going back to USAA despite the higher costs. And I'm like, I only have like seven and I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> I don't want to yeah. deal with this shit, you know? Um, so yeah, I, do you feel like you made the right choice with trimming the fat as bad as that sounds? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I think that it, um, I I'm really like optimistic for the year, you know, things have started off pretty strong and, you know, I, I'm, I'm excited. Um, again, like we don't know what this year will hold and if interest rates drop, like everyone hopes that they will. And, you know, all of these things happen, then it may be, uh, we may have a need right with the business to, to bring on other agents or things like that. Um, you know, obviously, you know, with agent partners and things like that, like you have the opportunity to be able to, you know, partner with agents where they're not necessarily on your team, which is great, you know, so um, we may look to just partner with agents to bring them on to, you know, help train them. And then, you know, they do open houses and, and help with like overflow buyers and stuff like that, as opposed to, you know, growing out the team, um, you know, to a team of 30 or 50 or 100 or whatever, you know, magic number there is. And you have a management degree. Is that right? I do. What what does what would you say carried over like the skills that you learned from that over to being a team leader and like what you're working on now? I mean, honestly, I don't think that like having a degree has done a ton for me in real estate, you know, um, just because like, I, I, I don't know, uh, the barrier to entry to real estate is obviously pretty low. Um, but, you know, I think that the um, or, like relationships that I've made and kind of connections and just like life experience and things like that have been has been really like beneficial and helpful, you know, in the real estate world. Um, but I don't think that like, you know, since I took like an economics class, like I'm I'm better served to to sell real estate, um, you know, but I, I've, you know, made a lot of great connections and gotten referrals from people that I went to to undergrad or grad school with or things like that. And so, you know, I think it's the people that you meet along the way and the experiences that you have that um, better set you up, right, to, to, you know, be a better you know, communicator or negotiator or, you know, whatever it may be. I, I really appreciate that, that, uh, transparency, you know, cause people, I, I feel like sometimes people hide behind their degree, um, or, or they think, you know, I spent so much time and effort and money on this degree. Let me somehow, you know, make it seem like without this degree, I couldn't have been where I'm at now. And so th thanks for sharing that. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> She's like, that's all I got. We're done. That's all I got. Wait. <laughs> all right. I'll see you guys. <laughs> yeah. Bye. Kind of real. Later. That's it. I'm curious um, about what you are struggling with because, you know, it's really easy to look at the amount of traction you get on the internet and your stats and your achievements and your team and your all the things. And it's like, damn, Katie's got it all figured out, which I'm sure you freaking do. <laughs> but if you had to pick something that you're either like trying to fix in your business or that you're like struggling with right now, what would that be? I think that like the leverage um, aspect is difficult and like the time management aspect of things, right? And so like having, you know, trying to figure out like, okay, I, I need to create content. I need to manage the team. I need to manage my deals. I need to, you know, do these different things. There aren't always enough hours in the day, right? And so um, trying to, you know, as they like people say, like chasing rabbits or things like that, like trying to to um, focus on all of the things isn't always, you know, the best. And so um, it's definitely been a little bit of a struggle over the past few years, like trying to figure out like where my attention needs to go. Um, and, you know, I think that 
obviously, you know, part of the solution last year was to to adjust the size of the team um, and just different things like that. And so I think that it's like just a constant thing of like reevaluating and making sure that like, you know, while something may not be the most lucrative thing today, like, will it be more luc- lucrative later, you know, and like being able to like forecast that and like you don't always pick the right thing. Um, so, you know, trying to not second guess yourself along the way, I think is is difficult as well. And that's, that is, how do you um, combat the voice in your head that is second guessing you? Do you have like a strategy? Do you and your husband like talk it? I don't know. What is your, what is your mechanism for dealing with that voice? I wish I had like a great like hack or a thing of like, you know, uh, but no, I mean, I think that there's always going to be some doubt, right? Like, um, with, with anything that you do. Like, I think that if someone says they don't have it, then they're either, uh, lying or just, you know, psychopath. out of touch with reality. Yeah. Okay. Or psychopath. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, filling you in your sleep. No. Okay. But yeah. Right. Um, they actually don't sleep cause they're a vampire, but right. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, I think, <laughs> I think that, you know, there's always going to be some like, okay, like I, I hope that this is the right path. I hope this is the right thing that I'm doing. Right. Um, you know, so I think that things that have helped me, um, are having a business coach, right? So I have a third party person that I can talk to about things. You know, I've been in different forms of coaching since like 2018, right? And so whether that's, you know, if you can't afford a coach, like having some sort of accountability partner, someone that you meet with on a regular basis that like you go over different things, um, and kind of have check-ins on your business on if things are working or aren't working. So that's been very helpful. Um, this year we implemented like having a monthly meeting, my husband and I, where we go over like personal stuff, work stuff, finances, you know, what's, what's making money, what's not, you know, and, and that way we can kind of make better decisions on, you know, if things are working or not working sooner rather than, you know, realizing that, you know, six months down the road, we've spent, you know, 20 grand on something that was a complete failure, right? Like we, we will look to cut things sooner or look to, you know, just evaluate them more frequently. Yeah, those touch points. It's so helpful in something that I never did in the beginning is I was just like all gas. Yo, real quick. This podcast is not free. Cost of admission is sharing with a buddy who'd benefit or throwing it on your Instagram story. I guess we'll reshare that shit. Like no break, <laughs> yeah. no yeah, looking yeah, yeah. back. And then, you know, hindsight 2020, I'm like, man, if I had only like done a little bit more analysis and calculated like the return of my energy and my time and financially and all of these things and placed things differently. Wow. That would have helped. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. And uh, Allie and I are both curious, who is your coach? Have you had multiple? What is we we're interested in the coaching piece? Yeah, for sure. So um, I've been with Tom Ferry coaching since about 2020. Um, So I coach with Jason Pantana. And I've been with him for probably about two and a half years. That's very fucking cool. Okay. (laughs) Because I think, and Ali, speak up, you know, you're going to say something because Ali, I believe, was in Tom Ferry coach. I, did you ask for for Jason? And they were like, he's oh, too yeah. busy. Or, and I was like, okay, put me on the wait list. And they go, we don't have a wait list for him. I was like, Let's create one. <laughs> I'm putting you're number one. Your wait, list, wait list of one. Like you're, you're like, you call, you'll, yeah. you call a tweak. You're like, how's my position on the wait list? They're like, it doesn't exist. <laughs> Still first and last. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so then, okay. So you've had Jason Pantana as a coach. Um, who, at what point did you decide to pivot? Because you've had coaching since 2018. Um, when do you know if it's time to move on to a different coach? I mean, I think that, I mean, there are some people that I talk to that have been like, say in Tom Ferry for like 10 years and they've had the same coach the entire time, you know, but I think that like, similar to how I was saying, like that over time, my husband and my roles have changed on the team. Like, I think that your business changes over time, right. And like what you need changes over time. Um, and so, well, while it gets comfortable, like talking to the same person every week for a year or two years or three years or 10 years, at a certain point in time, it may make sense to make an adjustment to like challenge yourself more in another aspect of business. Um, or, you know, if your lead sources change, or if you realize that you're not as organized as you thought you were, or like whatever it is, like people may need more help in a different area that like a coach may not be the best person to serve them, right? So it's like maybe they need to go to someone else for a while to work more on operations or to work more on sales skills or whatever it may be. What is Jason Pantana's biggest piece of advice that he's given you specifically yeah. with YouTube? Yeah. <laughs> Share everything, Katie. <laughs> um, what's funny is like, honestly, we don't talk about social. Like if if I took like all of the hours of coaching and like distilled them down, like we probably talk about like social and video, like 
15, maybe 20% of the time, right? Like a lot of what we're talking about is like ops and, and stuff like that. And so whenever I tell people that, like, oh no, that's bullshit. Like you guys have to talk. And I'm like, sometimes we do like sometimes an entire call. We're like, dude, so like try this and this and that. And like, we go, we go like deep in on like a different strategy or something like that. One thing that he has been on me, this is just more, maybe not the best thing, but the the most like top of mind thing for me that he's been harping on me that I haven't taken any, any action on is uh, doing YouTube ads. Um, he's like, here's 15 ads that you should shoot and run and like do all of these things. And like, I have them all like bookmarked of like other people's videos of ads they're running that are doing really well for them. Um, and I've taken no action. So, um, you know, maybe by the time this airs, I'll actually have YouTube ads going to, to generate more business. Um, but that's, that's something that I haven't taken any action on. Katie, you, you can say no, <laughs> but we ask all guests on our show to provide um, a, a golden, what we call a golden nugget, some sort of either checklist or script or anything like that, that the audience can implement into their business that day. Would you be so willing as to give that as your golden nugget? Um, I mean, it would just be like other people's videos. Um so I don't know how oh, it was how well. Yeah, they were that? just like they were just bookmarks of like the, this yeah, video. Yeah, so like video. I don't okay, know gotcha. how well. I feel like I could give something that would be like that would move the needle more for someone. So I mean, I can share that, but I don't. I don't know if that's if that's something that like you know because I feel like a lot of people you know like I'll see Ali does a video and I'm like oh this is really good and then like I take her script and I read it word for word and then like no one watches it and it gets like four views. I'm like wait, this was viral for her. Why did no? And it's like because it's Ali's video, not mine. So yeah, let me let me. Think if I can if I can't think of something that I can impart that is more gold than that, then yes, a hundred percent. But I feel as if I could provide something that would be of more value. So we accept whatever you think is most valuable. So, yeah, and it can literally, <laughs> literally just like anything that you like email templates that you may use or your TC uses or the ops like a tracker, or the freaking campaign, whatever, whatever you have, Katie, we will accept if it's the best that okay. you got. We won't accept less. Okay. Only, only if it's the best. Okay. Right. Got it. Got Correct. Katie, hey, so you have a conference. Can you tell us about that? Yeah. So um, basically like three and a half, maybe four-ish years ago, uh, my buddy Tim and I basically were like kind of complaining to each other about how you go to these conferences and everyone's like, you should do video, you should do video. And then like they give you like a very surface level, like here's how you should do video. And like it's not always tactical right and they're like you should do it but like i'm going to show you a video and then i'm not going to give you how to make it or how to do it or like the blueprint for it or whatever and so you know it's probably after a few drinks but we were like hey like we should we should throw a conference man you know and and so basically um we decided to do a conference in 20 what year are we in 2024 three 2022 i guess was the first year um and so we were like okay we're just gonna like get together a bunch of people that are doing video really well, have them like not only kind of explain what they're doing and, and give like the proof of success, but then like actually break down like if you're going to shoot a video, like this is how you do it. These, this is the settings I use. This is the, this that I do. You know, this is how we do it. This is how we, you know, deal with leads when they come in and, and just like really break all of that down and give like actual things that people could implement. And so, yeah, we, we kicked it off in 2022. Uh, we did it again last year. And then this year will be our third annual uh real estate video blueprint that's so dope dude um tell the audience where they can find a ticket if this is open to the public um yeah. how they can register yeah so uh real estate video blueprint.com um or shoot me a dm on instagram um and i'd be happy to send you a link i really i think that's really cool especially since a lot of um people that i i realize People, like you said, people will give enough away to leave them hanging with extra questions. So yes, like there is such a big like void in the how, you know, they tell, they tell you the what, and they don't tell you or theory, but they don't tell you tactically. This is how you do it. Step one, step two, step three. So that's awesome that you're taking that into your own hands. I'm glad that you had those drinks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, some things. Yeah. But I think that, um, the other thing too, is like, we try to find people that like, They've got like the thing, right? And so um, last year we have a, a guy that we know out of Alberta, Canada, and he does like property tours, right? And like there are a lot of agents out there doing property tours, right? Like it's it's like your your TikTok and Instagram feeds are like inundated with it, right? But like he did in his first year of, of real estate, like 360 property tours and posted them every single day 
in his first year of real estate and sold 60 homes, right? And so it's like, yeah, I did a property tour and like I do one a week, you know, kind of thing. But like his thing was property tours, right? And so he built such a following on TikTok that then like now he can go to like LA or New York or Texas or wherever and shoot videos and they still get hundreds of thousands of views or, or tens of thousands of views even when he's in other places because like he built the brand and the thing around that one thing, right? And I think too many people are trying to do like all the things, right? Um, they don't just pick one and, and like stick to it. So that's really cool. And that's Tyler Hassman, uh, who's crushing it in Calgary. Shout out. It's funny, Allie and I have this sheet behind the screens where we're like typing to each other with our next questions, who's next. And like, we were trying to guess who it was. I got it wrong. Um, <laughs> uh, I thought it was Brad McCallum. Does not matter. Shout out Tyler. You said Tyler? Yeah, Tyler Hassman. So Brad is awesome, but like, he's the unicorn of, of like property tours, right? Like if he did 300 so like videos of how his like high super high quality videos like that would just be like absolutely amazing and unreal yeah he's also built like an amazing brand but like what he does isn't necessarily something that like you can replicate without spending thousands of dollars or tons of time like he's totally. self-taught and then hired a videographer after like a couple years of doing it all on his own um but he would put like 20 or 30 hours into one video right it's and so like, you can go quantity or quality yeah right and yeah again most people just aren't willing to put in the time you know necessary to to get there question about the conference so this is its third year is it like a as big as possible type of conference are you guys capping it at a certain like, what is the size how many days what is the i don't know more information if you would yeah so it's uh it's april 10th and 11th so it's a two-day conference um day one's going to be like all speakers day two is speakers and then we're going to do like a little mastermind kind of thing of like putting together the blueprint to ensure that you actually like do the stuff Right. And then, and all of that. Um, and then I think capacity. So it's, it's, what's really cool is like this year we're doing it at House of Blues, which is like a conference, uh, conference concert venue place in Houston. So like, you know, there'll be shows and stuff there. And so like we have the music hall. Um, so the, the acoustics will be good. Right. And like it's a pretty, it's a pretty like interesting venue. So you're not going to be sitting in like a hotel conference room all day. Um, and then I think capacity is like 350, like on the floor. Like if we had everyone sitting on the floor, but like there is possibility to like fill the mezzanine as well, like up top. Um, I like the idea of kind of everyone sitting like in the same kind of space for like a little bit more of like an intimate feel. But yeah, I mean, there's there's opportunity for, you know, more people as well. Dude, you have so many things going on. You're a content creator, you're a team leader, you're a producer, you're a conference host. What else? What do we not talk about? I feel like that's that's like most of most of my life. Do you, ha what do you, what are your thoughts on balance? Is that a word that, I don't know, what, what are you, what's your personal life like? <laughs> what personal life? No. Um, you know, I think that, I think that that's like difficult, right? Cause like, especially when in working with clients and stuff like that, it's like, you know, we, we want to pretend like we're available all the time. Um, you know, again, having admin help and different things like that has allowed me for a little bit more time. Um, you know, I'm trying harder, especially like this year to like be where I am. Right. And like, if I'm, you know, out to dinner or whatever it is, like, sometimes I'll like leave my phone at home. Right. Cause it's like, you know, you can leave your phone at home for like an hour and a half. Right. Like you don't need to check Instagram, you know, when you go to the bathroom and stuff like that. So like, I'll do stuff like that. Um, I try really hard. Like some days I just leave my computer at the office, you know? So if like, if I know I don't have anything that I need to do that night, um, I'll just leave my computer at the office and, you know, go home. Um, so, so I, you know, I've got a little bit of balance. Um, but like, I don't think I'd ever be good just like not working at all. Um, so, you know, it, like, that's just kind of my personality. Yo, real quick. This podcast is not free. Cost of admission is sharing with a buddy who'd benefit or throwing it on your Instagram story. Tag us. We'll reshare that shit. I find that every single time I don't bring my computer <laughs> is the only time when I need it. And like same thing with my, I don't know, just, just anything. I, anytime I don't bring a book is when I have downtime and could read a book, you know, on sales, of course. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, it's yeah just, obviously. of course. <laughs> obviously. <laughs> um, man, okay. That's, I, I should probably do more of that. Um, I want to ask about real and rev share. What, um, I don't know, like what you can or cannot say, but with rev share, how big of a, a, pillar is that in your income and your business and in your agent's business? Yeah. Um, so it's, it's kind of cool. Um, you know, we were at Coldwell Banker before we came to real. And so, 
you know, they would bring other agents to the team, you know, or bring other agents to the brokerage or things like that. And like, it'd be like, awesome, like, appreciate that. And like, that was kind of all, you know, that it was, but like, you know, they wanted to work with great agents, they wanted to, you know, be surrounded by by friends and stuff like that. And so, you know, they, they still did it with no expectation of like receiving anything in return. Um, so it's been cool to see, you know, now being at a company that that rewards that by paying their agents, like, as my agents have brought on other people, like that they're able to, you know, make some money off of that. You know, again, it's not something that's gonna be like a, a huge, uh, you know, differentiator or something like that. But like, for them to get some reward for for wanting to grow the team and for wanting to grow, you know, real here in Houston and, and things like that, like, that's been really cool. Um, you know, for me, it's a little bit more of a pillar, um, just from, you know, doing different events and speaking and things like that across the country and having agent relationships through coaching communities and stuff like that, uh, Instagram and stuff. So um, for me, that's definitely like a, a specific pillar of income and something, you know, that we look at. And again, like, as I was saying, it's like my husband and I will meet of like, you know, what did we bring in real estate? What did the team bring in? You know, what did RevShare bring in? What are, what do all of these things look like? Right. And then how is time being spent? Um, so for me, you know, this year, that's definitely a little bit more of a focus than, uh, you know, it would have been in, you know, 2020 prior to coming over here or things like that. Yeah. Especially since, I, I, I mean, that's the good thing, I think, about cloud-based brokerages with that type of model where you can expand anywhere. You know, like you're so good at social media, you can help any agent anywhere. So that's that's what I like about um, where these like brokerages are, are now going and, and how they're modeling. I also know that you are super big into your health. So I want to like your day to day, you know, you have a kid, you go to the gym, you post publicly your, your goals of, you know, going to the gym like 300 times a year or whatever it is. What other, what else do you do in your day to day to keep you fueled to continue doing everything of what you do? Um, today's not a great day for me to answer that because we had like leftover birthday cake. Um, so I've eaten like way too much birthday cake today. So I'm not feeling so great about the health, uh, the health side of things today, uh, because I'm like on a sugar high right now. Um, and have consumed probably like 5,000 calories of just, just crap today. (laughs) Um, so not a great day for me to talk about like being a, a, you know, role model for health, but, um, I, I mean, I try to work out in the mornings. Um, that's what works best for me. So like, I, you know, there's, there's like the, uh, gym bro influencer. That's like, you know, you have to wake up at 4am and, you know, drink a protein shake and go lift. Um, and then like the cancel culture of the, like the morning, morning routines are shit. And like the only people that say that is now that they make millions of dollars a year, they have the time to do that. And so for me, like I work out in the mornings because if I try to do it in the afternoons, like I'll eat way too much cake and feel like shit and not want to go. Work will get busy, you know, things will come up and I just won't go. And so it makes the most sense for me to work out at 5 a.m. because then I can get out of the way, come home, eat breakfast, return a few emails and start my day. And like no one else is awake yet. And that's that's what works the best for me. You know, I think the public accountability around things is something I've done for a while of like whether it's, you know, real estate sales or, you know, workouts or whatever it is, like having people that are cheering you on and also, you know, kind of hating on you too, like is is good for me because it's like, I mean, you know, you you don't really care if I hit my workout goal or not, but like I just I want to do it for me and then having people, you know, egg me on a little bit just kind of fuels fuels me. I don't think the morning routine is shit and every time I hear Alex Hermosi talking shit about my damn miracle morning. I'm like, bro, I'm sure you're dra- jacked. Like, And I love you. Like, Ale- I'm telling you this. If you ever see this, Alex, I think the world of you. But fuck you because m- the morning routine is not just for the people who made it. It can really change your life. And um, anyway, that's a total sidebar. And that was just me and Alex there. You guys left. For yeah, a moment. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but you can come back now. I'm sorry. <laughs> No, I um I don't I don't disagree, right? Like I mean, I think that it's very powerful, but I just I know it doesn't work for everyone, right? And so totally. like yeah. you know, for me getting up early, having that time where I can work out, I can do these things and then like not have any interruptions is great, right? But like if I'm working out, whenever I go to the gym in the afternoon, like I'm getting calls from from agents. I'm getting calls from my agents. Mm-hmm. I'm getting calls, you know, that a deal's falling apart and I'm like ah, and like I'm not in the workout, but at 5 a.m., you know, there's no distraction. So totally. it's what works best for me. Totally. So. And whoever. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We already asked kind of what the future holds and we kind of asked, you know, if there's anything we missed. So Allie, do you have a good question? Is there anything (laughs) 
on your mind that we didn't cover before we head to our wrap up? Um, anything that that you think would benefit be the helpful. audience? So good, Allie. Yeah. Crushed it. <laughs> Words. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know if I have anything else. I'm still trying to think of what I want to give for my golden nugget, which, you know, maybe I'll, I'll send you something that has nothing to do with anything we talked about today. And people are going to be like, well, this has nothing like fun to compliment what you said but you know we'll, we'll see so that's where my mind is right now but so, it, sorry that's okay that's exciting we'll we'll go in the wrap up and if Allie and i think of anything else crazy we'll just like fling it in there and just take you yeah. completely by surprise but wrap yeah. up question number one is what is your right. favorite app or tool favorite app or tool instagram boom easy that- nailed it <laughs> do you have it on your yeah. on your first page of your phone uh no i don't i actually have it on my second page Okay. It's next to Follow Up Boss and Slack. So those are like, I don't know why. Those are probably my three most used apps. And they're on the, my second page. Yeah, I, uh, I, I think I have mine on my third page, like Facebook and Instagram. Um, just because I know if it's on my first page, I'm going to become a consumer. But like, if I, it's on my third page, I am, I feel like more of a creator. <laughs> it's on my time when I'm going to post shit. <laughs> okay. Second question, what events are you going to in 2024? Apple listeners, this short pause is to ask you for a review. Here's how to do it. Back out of the specific episode, go to the page where you see all the episodes, scroll down, keep scrolling. Perfect. Now tap those five stars. Thank you so much. Back to the show. Um, All right. I'm going to Orlando, Florida for Elite Retreat with Tom Ferry. I'm going to... I'm looking at my calendar behind me or behind the camera. I'm going to Tampa, Florida for a one day event for agents on marketing and branding. Uh, I'm going to Dallas for a buyer mastery class with uh, Sharon Travazza, real estate video blueprint in April. I'm going to Calgary for a real event. And then I'm going to Tom Ferry Summit. And then I'm going to Location TBD for the real conference in October. And that's all I've got right now on my calendar. So still, I'm sure it'll way, fill up. As yeah, the I'm like, that's a lot of things. But we yeah. are hanging out. Katie, Allie and I are going to Tom Berry Summit in August. We're going to hang out with you. It's going to be so much fun. I'll be there. Yep. I'll see you there. <laughs> yeah, I'll actually okay. see you. What is it? In a month for the Elite for Retreat as well. So. All right. Yeah, I'll Orlando. give you a high five. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> Katie, how can we and listeners help you in your business? I love that. Uh, that's a great question. I guess just um, follow follow along with content. Uh, let me know if you think it's good or bad or indifferent or you know what what you would like to see more of, and and I'd love to you know make that do that. Yeah, and maybe even if you if and when you decide to grow your realtor team, if anybody is already out there, maybe they can make the cut or maybe not. <laughs> so, and referrals. Reach out to, you to see if you could even apply. <laughs> that, was, uh, that, was, that was the, the best sales pitch I've heard for, for joining the team. Like, maybe you'll make it or not. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. I'll, 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 I'll stop myself there before I say anything mean about um, <laughs> people that think that they deserve stuff. Okay. Where can people find you? They know of someone moving to Houston, Texas. They're like, hey, Katie Day is who, the, like the team that I want to help out my friend, my client, my whatever. Where can they reach out to you? Yeah, best place would be on Instagram, uh, Move Me to Texas, M O V E M E T O T X. Awesome. And it's the same thing on your YouTube as well, right? If they wanted to watch any YouTube videos of yours. Yep. Move me to Texas. Move me to TX. So hell yeah, reach out to Katie. If you have anybody that you know of looking to move to Houston, or if you're a real estate agent, maybe you can make the comment or not. <laughs> we are also on Instagram as well. Allie the Agent, The Shelby Show, from the Agent Goldmine. Stay tuned to see what the golden nugget is going to be. Hit us up. We have been getting a lot of DMs, and I sent this in the last podcast as well. We've been getting a lot of DMs saying that this has been helpful. Thank you so, so much. Please kindly um, put that on in the Apple review. We'll love you forever. And if you want daily content of this, more of us, um, but maybe less of me being creepy, hit us up. Dude, you can have access to us. We're opening up our community to you. Just hit either one of us up, The Shelby Show, Allie the Agent. For listeners out there, be a bro and share this show. A whole conference now. 
Katie sorry, that was Katie 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 That was <laughs> sorry. Uh, Ali, do you have a good question? Huh? Oh. I want to know if there's. Will it bring you? I still um, haven't got my <laughs> one of my right. hotels. Oh, no, <laughs> I need an assistant. <laughs> it's like Katie. Do you need a roommate? <laughs> Just kidding. Oh my god. Stop. <laughs> Kidding. Uh, <laughs> if you block us after this, then that's okay because it got weird. Well, it's just it's just <laughs> Allie going, right? So I wouldn't have to block both of you. Right, just Allie. Yeah, just block Allie. Cool. Got it. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Heard. <laughs> Thanks so much for listening, dude. If you want the golden nugget that this guest provided, see the show notes or just go straight to theagentgoldmine.com. That's where we keep all our resources for you. Till next time.